Hi guys, it is Saturday, September 3rd, and I'm here to do my August book update. Um, I'm a little bit late. I was going to do it on Wednesday, and I fell asleep. And then on Thursday, I had called my friend, and because um, she's got some big stuff going on, and I didn't want her to call back in the middle of my video, so I'm like, let me wait until she calls. But by the time she called, I was already doing other stuff, and so I just didn't do it. And I didn't feel like it um, after that. Um, and then Friday, I just, I think I took a nap again a little bit, and I got on Zoom, and I, so here I am. I was tired. So here I am. Um, August was a good month, stitching-wise. Um, it was a hard month in other ways, but it was a good month stitching wise. I did, for me, I did more than 4,000 stitches, um, which is, which is good for me. Uh, I don't always make it to 4,000, so it works for me. Um, so I'll show you what I've been working on and what I bought. And we'll talk about some plans and some categories and, you know, normal stuff. So we'll start with what I worked on. I'll show you a picture. The first thing that I'm going to show you is... Illuminating new manuscript from Barbara and Richter. These are in there's two of them and they're in two different issues at Crosses and Country Crafts from nineteen ninety 1990 and nineteen ninety one. And this was uh Alma's birthday start. On July fifteenth. We started this together. I'm pretty sure she's ahead of me. Um, so I, I only did 200 stitches on it and that's where I got, I filled in all that gold in the middle here. I filled in the gold, I did some more of the blue. Um, so that's where, that's where I got on it. I don't know if it's going to come back out this month. Maybe it will. I don't really have it slated for any of the categories. So I don't know. It might it might take a break for a month. I do still want to get um five hundred and something stitches in it before the end of the year. Uh, so that I have a total of a thousand stitches in it. This is gonna be last. We'll do this one next. This one is Temperature Tree, and I did about 500 stitches in it, a little more than 500 stitches. Um, I did the July branch, you can see right there, I put the July branch in. I finished up, mostly I finished up the June branch, or the June leaves. I, have to, I still need two more leaves for June, and then um, I started doing the July leaves. So we are kind of in a heat wave here in Southern California and it's not too bad here. I mean, it's hot, like I won't lie, it's hot, but it's not too bad here because I live by the ocean, you know, I live on the coast and so that kind of cools it off. But if you go inland, like where my mom lives near Griffith Park and, you know, the Riverside County, and if you go into other inland areas, it's it's in the 90s, and I think in some places it's in triple digits. We've been issuing warnings about the electric grid can't handle the demand, so, you know, conserve electricity, and I think they're kind of cutting off people's electricity at certain places, I don't know, but it's been hot. So, um, that makes, <laughs> that kind of makes me happy, though. Because, look at this, 
June. All of June is in two colors except for four leaves. There's those two yellow leaves here. There's this one and there's this one down here on the 30th. And then there's two more. There's one here on the 21st and there's one on the 29th that are a different shade of yellow. And all the rest of it is green. And I think July is going to be not quite as much green, but it's still going to be a lot of green and a little bit of yellow. Um, so I'm kind of glad we're getting into some hotter temperatures so that I will have some other colors on my tree rather than green and yellow. Um, I don't expect to have a whole lot of red because I do live by the ocean. And if we get into the 90s here, it's, it's not very often that we get that high. So... Um, I have some friends who are doing temperature charts and they live in areas where it gets in the hundreds and all of their squares are like red and orange and red and orange. And mine, I was thinking about adjusting the scale a little bit, but then I've already stitched some of the colors and I wish I had adjusted it before I started stitching. But I think at this point I'm just going to leave it the way it is and it's going to be what it is. Um, so there's my temperature tree. I need to hurry up. I need to get caught up because I still have to put July's leaves on and we're here in September. So I need to, I need to hurry up and catch up. I take it to work on some of the weeks when I'm working in the office, but, um, I only work on it two days, so I do like eight or ten leaves in two days, but then I don't work on it again for another five or six days, so I'm not really getting caught up, <laughs> you know. I'm not getting more behind, but I'm not really getting caught up, so I need to, I need to uh, spend some time on it and get it caught up. So the next one here is... Joy in the Journey. Let me show this to you. Joy in the Journey by Leisure Arts. Um, you can buy this in PDF from the Leisure Arts website. It's like six bucks or something. This was my birthday start in 2020. And I did... Um, 900 stitches on it this month. So I finished the house. I did, I had finished the, the main color of the house last month. So I did the, win the windows and the doors and the roof and the chimneys on the house. And I started on the, on the picket fence in the front. So I did, I did 900. Let me see, what is it? I did 894 stitches. And this is in the categories for this month, so this is going to come back out. If you remember, I had kind of set a goal that I wanted to finish this before EJ and I start our shadow lane on October 7th, and like now half the Sunshine Stitches group too. Um, I don't think I'm going to make it. I'm going to work on it some more. I'll get it further along, but I don't think I'm going to finish it before then. Which is, you know, it's fine. I'm going to finish it before the end of the year. And it's fine. Alright. The next one. This one. This one is amazing. Not the most amazing, but the second most amazing. Um, this is my dog. And I did 1,017 stitches on him this month, last month. And I've done a little bit of work on him. I've, I've put about 100 and something stitches in him this month, yesterday and the day before. Um, so there's my dog. Look at him. He's got his ear and he's starting to get his body. Like I've run out of, almost run out of stitches in his face. I need to go back there and fill in the ninja stitches, but fill in his eyes. But he looks amazing. I'll show you the before from last month. Because 
like when I started him last month, none of this was here. There was a straight line that went like down right, like right here somewhere. Or, yeah, like right there. It was a straight line. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you the before picture. If I get to the right place on my camera. Where is that? Sorry. I thought this would be easier to find. Here we go. That's the picture that I'm looking for. Look at that. There's where I started out. And there's after a thousand and seventeen stitches plus a little bit more that I did this month. I'm like, that's a big difference. So I was very excited about that. He's also going in the categories this month. And I'm aiming for another thousand stitches on him. Um, I have a year-end goal to get to 5,000 stitches for Whipgo. And I'm at 2,700 and we're in September. <laughs> so I need to hurry. <laughs> so my goal for this month is to do another thousand stitches. And, um, and in fact, I'm working on a, on a shop for road trip that's a thousand stitches and I don't know that I'm going to do them all in one, you know, I don't know that I'm going to do them all on this piece. I think I might do some of them on this piece and go to something else and then come back to this later. But, um, I'm aiming for a thousand stitches. And then my last piece, this is my love. I did 1,437 stitches or something on this piece. This is Under the Evergreen by Teresa Winsler, and I did the entire border. I went in and um, I filled in all of the ninja stitches and I did the garland and I did the gingerbread man right there and um, I had my friends go through and proofread it for me and they pointed out some stitches that I missed and I did those and I did the border. It was 1,400 and something stitches. And um, I'm very happy. This month I'm going to tackle some of the back stitch. So I'm not really looking forward to having to count that. But I'm going to tackle some of the back stitch this month. Because it won't be fun if I wait until the end and do it all at the end. Although I did have a look at the back stitch instructions. Um, and it's not really as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, you have to backstitch all the motifs, but, um, it doesn't really seem as bad as I thought it would be. I think there's a couple places in the instructions where it, I could see how it might get to be a little bit confusing, but, um, I'm going to tackle that this month and then next month. We'll probably move over to the right side of the uh, piece and do the, there's more tree and more carpet and the jack-in-the-box and there's a spinning top and a drum 
and the rest of the rocking horse. And um, so, yeah, this is um, on my list to finish next year. I'm going to do backstitch, and then I have three more months to work on it, and then it's on my list to finish next year. So, I might slow down from the doing a thousand stitches and 1400 stitches a month for the rest of the year. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to put some more stitches in it. So that is what I worked on this month. Um, plans. categories. The categories are categories are part of a series and I am going to use um, I'm going to use French Kitchen for that. I only have about 300 stitches in this, so I need some love. My goal is also to get it to 1,000 stitches. That's my goal for all my new starts this year, is to get them to 1,000 stitches. So I'm going to use French Kitchen for part of a series. Um, haven't stitched on in 2022. This one, I'm not sure. Um... What I'm going to try to do, I've been saying this all year, is I'm going to try to use my Hade Fairy because she needs to be finished. I just need to sit down at my desk with my magnifier and my light and or at the table and figure it out and work on it. And that's part of what's putting me off is because her... I'm trying to figure her out and then you know my desk chair isn't as comfortable as my recliner and neither is the dining room chair <laughs> so that's kind of what's pretty part part of what's putting me off too but the magnifier that I have the arm on it it's like a tabletop one and the arm on it just isn't long enough you know for me to and it just doesn't work here like you know it's made for you to sit at a table and it's it's sized for that proportion between the chair and the table and having the TV tray here or having a table here at the recliner it just it doesn't work it's too high and it doesn't work so um or it's too low I don't know it doesn't work anyway <laughs> um so I just need to sit my butt in the chair and do it um I might try to find somebody to zoom with me um because I can move my computer over there. I can zoom from over there. But, um, so, I want to finish her. She's only got, I think she's got like 3,200 or 3,400 stitches left. And it's ridiculous that she's not finished yet. And she's the only thing on my 22 and 22 that I have not stitched on this year. So, and if I don't use her... Um, then I'll either use Under the Evergreen for the, well, yeah, if I don't use her, I'm going to use Under the Evergreen for the alternate. I could also pull in a different whip, or I could do a new start, but I'm not really feeling either one of those things. So, um, I'm either going to stitch on the fairy or I'm going to use the alternate. Um, let's see, medium. The next two categories are medium and stitcher's choice, and those two, and I, they're kind of interchangeable for me. One's going to be joy in the journey, one's going to be retrievers. It doesn't, it kind of doesn't matter which one's which. Um, and then large, uh, large is going to be three things sampler because it's sampler September, and I have this big sampler that I have only put 200 stitches in this year. 
So Alma and I agreed we're both going to get her out and we're going to do some more fun free things here for her camp in September. And so that's going to be my categories. I'm going to try to do some more fun temperature treating. Try to get that closer to kind of, um, my WIPCO calls were, um, what were my WIPCO calls? I don't even know. One of them was a page on, an, um, a free thing sampler. That's not going to happen. I don't think I'm going to finish that. And the other one was, I should really be more prepared when I do these. The numbers were 3 and 22. Oh, the other one was to finish temperature tree. That'll be in December, of course. Hopefully, if I get caught up. So, those are my plans for next month. Um... Yeah. So. Paul. That's on there. Um. That was it. Alright. So. I've been trying to slow down on the body. I've talked about this before. And it's still kind of true. I've been buying less stuff. Kind of. Sort of. I've been buying less random stuff. We'll do it that way. I've been buying less random stuff, like off stash and load. I've been doing a lot less me-pleasing. But I've been buying more expensive stuff. <laughs> so, I got from Sammy at Tiny Hummingbird Stitchery. I got the Fox from the uh, Year in the Woods series. This is number one. And, um... I think I'm going to stitch this next year. I don't think I'm going to do it this year, but I think next year I'll do this one. I want to do this one first. So. I don't... I may have shown this last month. I kind of think that I got it too late to show it, though. So, I got a piece of fabric from Misty. This is Wisteria. And it's a really pretty shade of purple. And I know exactly what I'm going to use it for. In fact, I had trouble finding it because I put it in a project bag and I forgot. And then I was like, oh, yeah. So Margaret and I are going to do a new year, new start. And Margaret and I are, like, stitching all the things together next year because we're crazy like that. Um... Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. So this is um, what we're going to stitch. Is This is Telesci by, Quaker, by Quaint Rose Needle Arts on Etsy. Um, and this is going to be our new year, new start. And I bought the PDF and she bought the paper copy while we were at the attic in July. And so I'm going to use this fabric. And I'm going to stitch it in white. I don't know if I'm going to use 3865 or white or B5200 or I don't know exactly what shade I'm going to use, but I'm going to use white thread and stitch it on the purple. So that will be my new year new start. And then I got. Oh, okay, well. This is one of those random things that I did just kind of me please a cash and load. So remember last year in December I finished my oldest whip. I finished Victorian Village. It's my oldest whip. Now it's the dogs. Not this is done. So this was a kit by Janlin from 1993 by Eleanor Engel, and I was on 
I was on Facebook and somebody somebody had posted in like a unicorn thread that they were looking for this, but they didn't post a picture of it. Or maybe they posted in the cross touch hunting group that they were looking for this kit, but they didn't post a picture of it. So I didn't really know what they were talking about. And then somebody a little bit later posted and said, hey, somebody was asking for this and I have it if you want it. And she posted a picture of it. And I was like, oh, I need to have that. And so I went on eBay and I found it. And it's this one. This is Christmas Village Ornaments. And it's the same designer, Eleanor Engel. And, but instead of being a Victorian village, it's just, you know, a normal, a normal village. So it's the same idea, just a different, you know, just a different spin on it. I was like, yes, please. So I got that. These are, these are after the um, Victorian ones. These are from 1996. <sighs> so, I don't know. These are not going to get started this year. Maybe next year. Um, Laura from the Slovak Farm has the Victorian ones. So, maybe we'll do a stitch along and she'll do the Victorian ones and I'll do this one. We won't talk about who enabled Laura into buying the Victorian Village because it wasn't me. I don't know anything. It wasn't me. That was me. Okay. So, Miss Vicky at Stitch and Button made a boo boo. And she made too many of these bags. And I wanted the bag. But when she, I thought she only had three or four of them. I wasn't going to get one because I have enough bags. Vicky knows I have enough bags many bags. So I wasn't going to get one, but then she says, oh, I made too many of these. I have a bunch of them. I'm like, okay, well now I'll get one. So I got one. This is from Teresa Kogut. This is her fabric. And it matches the year in the woods perfectly. And then she's got the brown inside. It's got like some tone-on-tone -tone moths on it. It's hard to see with the glare, but it's got the moths on it. Um, And it's got a little leaf on the zipper pull. So I got that and of course she always has a project card in there and uh -oh. yep so I think my fox will go in that one probably. Vic at Stitch and Button. Go over to her group. Vic is doing a Christmas, a uh, 12 days of Christmas mystery box. And there's a limited number of slots. I think about half of them are gone already. Um, maybe more than half. And, um, it's $125. It's a $50 deposit. Go over there and get one if you want one. It's going to be a project bag and 12, you know, 12 things to unwrap. And you can unwrap them, you know, however you want. But, um, go over to Stitch and Button and, and claim one before they're gone. Because, you know, it's Vic and, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. So. The last thing that I got is, um, home, the Homespun Needlework and Cross Stitch Group. Uh, Homespun Cross Stitch and Needlework Group had an exclusive, uh, that they did with, uh, Tanya Brockmeyer at the Scarlet House. And it's actually not the group's exclusive. It's Dipper Needle's exclusive with Tanya. So I went and got one, and I claimed it on the day that it opened, and I got it, like, on the 24th or something. It took almost a month. It took the entire month of August to get it. They got a lot of orders. And so this is what it is. It's uh, a sampler for all seasons. Um, and it says, when the weather is hot, rainy, or cold, I look at my chart and stitch as I'm told. The wind may howl, raindrops may fall, I'm in my own world and safe from it all. With colors of thread from every hue, it makes me happy, this much is true. So, it's got the sampler, and it's got the, the smalls at the bottom. And, um, it comes as a kit, and they included some pins. And so this is on my radar to start next year. 
Margaret also bought one, so maybe we'll start it together. Um, maybe for her birthday. Her birthday's in January, and we were talking about maybe starting a Scrabble letter for her birthday. So, the last thing that I got... Which is a little bit here it is. A little bit out of character for me, but I liked it. Um, this is from the Witchy Stitcher. This is um, um, Edgar Allan Poe. It says, Leave My Loneliness Unbroken. I like that one, so I got that one. That's what I got. My Bird Crush and my Fortnite Fabric are on the way. We'll probably be here sometime this week. Um... Yeah, kind of a short video this month. Um, I've been a little bit bummed. My my friend that I was talking to on Thursday, I'm not going to get into too much detail, but the bottom line is that her husband is about to pass away. So um, I've been kind of feeling bad for her. Um, she's, she's in for a rough ride. Um, so I've been a little bit bummed, and that's that's why I didn't stitch on Thursday after I talked to her, and uh, I didn't talk to her yesterday, but I imagine she's not doing very well, so, um, yeah, I guess it was a rough month. My friend, my other friend lost her mom, and one of my friends from church passed away, and now my other friend's about to lose her husband, and so it's it's been a rough month. Um, in that way. Um, yeah. You know, we were talking on Zoom the other night about things come in threes. And it's different when it's celebrities. Like, you know, three celebrities will die within a few days of each other. But, you know, when it's people that you actually know and people that you love and people that are important to people that you love, like, it's, it's not the same. Um, so... Um, yeah. So I expect to be going to a couple of funerals in the next, well, the one for my church friend is being held this coming week on Thursday. So I'll go to that. And then my friend's husband, we'll see. I don't know. But, um, uh, yeah. So happy September. And I hope you all are doing well, and I hope you're getting a lot of stitching done. And um, I know it's been hot in a lot of the parts of the country, and it's starting to cool off. So uh, stay cool, and happy stitching, and I will see you next month. Bye.